Right. Hello. 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 Right. Yes. Hello. Yes. You. You. Yes. You. Hello. <laughs> hello. So uh, a while ago, a box arrived. I was extremely busy, so I didn't have time to make a proper unboxing video. So I've filmed myself doing the unboxing of that. And uh, let me show you that film right now. Okay. So here is a box. There's a knife. There's a finger. There's my life. Open the box up, spin it around. A bit of nifty editing there from me. Try and get this thing out. I come out, you bastard. There you go. And ta da! Yeah, so we have a white box with a, uh, well, it's, it says it's a matte box. It's not really, because a matte box, really a matte box, uh, would allow you to slide in some filters. That doesn't, it is really just barn doors. But let's have a look inside. Uh, remove the bubble wrap, and there you have it. There, so that is pretending to be a matte box. Um, it's very plasticky, plasticky little uh, knobbies on there. And we all know what we think of plasticky knobbies. Uh, it's just incredibly plastic. He, these are plastic and they have like, um, you know, they, you know, and under heat they might warp and bend. I don't really know. So I'm really not very impressed so far with these. It's got these little clips. They look like they're gonna snap pretty quick. So uh, let's put that to the side for a minute because I'm not entirely convinced by that. Now, what we got here? Well, this is a metal frame of sorts. Not entirely sure at this stage what this does or what it's for, but uh, this is a little bit better. Look at the little metal um, uh, clips on there, uh, attachments. That's a much more of the business. Uh, this is the rod, which I'm trying to get uh, a square peg into a round hole there. Uh, you can see a close up there of the, the metal, pretty good kit. Uh, if I take that blue thing off the end, I might have a bit more success. So uh, I was quite surprised to see this. The rails have on the end of them these little blue caps, which is pretty good. That means you can extend, you can extend the rails, um, pop the blue cap back on. That's beautifully modeled by me and my exceptionally thin and slender fingers. And then uh, let's put that to the side. Here's a handle, it's a very plasticky, rubbery handle. There's some more metal uh, clips there, dirty fingernail. Uh, put those to the side. What's in here? It's quite exciting. And it's more stuff. Uh, this here is the shoulder uh, mount, which um, I don't really get around to using in the end. It's got a weight on the back to balance it inside. You can see the metal strip goes all the way through that shoulder pad. Um, but that's pretty nifty and quite, there's some spare plastic pegs. Clearly there's a problem with them. That's like the little tooth thing for the, uh, that attaches to the lens so that the gauge on this here, the follow focus, can engage with the focus uh, ring on the lens. This is pretty cool. I wasn't, I didn't mind this too much. Again, there's a big plastic cog there. That's kind of a key part of it. So, you know, plastic isn't good. Uh, metal is excellent. Um, but you know, these things would normally cost 600 quid. And this one is probably only about 40 quid. There's another rod there for that. So that's the rails um, for the, uh, for the follow focus to go on. Uh, and uh, using the camera. So uh, that'll be useful to see. And here's some handles now. There's two handles in total. Uh, and these are just so I can grab on to the plate there. So that's the plate where the, tri uh, you know, which will attach to the tripod if I wanted it to. Uh, and also obviously to the body of the camera. You can see nothing but plastic fixers on there. Tighteners. Uh, they scare me. They scare me a lot. I'm not entirely convinced by them, but hopefully it will look good once I've got this bad boy all rigged up and put together. Who knows? Uh, but that's a decent piece of kit there. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a big chunk of metal with lots of Allen keys and screws. Um, I'm not too disappointed with that. I kind of think that this will do the job. It's got a nice attachment underneath. Um, so pretty robust apart from those weak attachments, but you can look into that and again two more little railings there uh, Which I'm sure I'll find out exactly what they're for So what you are wondering does all that rig when put together become well? I have my version of how I'm going to use it over here now before I show you it's a bit embarrassing uh, so before I show you it I just want to um, explain that um, I am going to be traveling very soon. I'm making six documentaries for a well-known uh, US broadcaster. There's six one hours, which is just a shocking amount of work. Um, I'm gonna be filming in Jordan. Um, I'm gonna be filming in Japan. I'm gonna be in the States twice. And these are all basically road trips. Uh, and I'm gonna be filming in Germany, Sweden, Spain, and Belgium, and France. I think that's it. 
lots and lots of traveling and I will be vlogging it so make sure you're following my vlogging channel but let me show you what I've done with this kit um, here a bit of a shocker there you go can you see this is what I've done with the the rig um, this is my Canon 60D on the top here which uh, I won't be using with this uh, rig but I just wanted to put it on to demonstrate uh, what is what on here let me just lower this because it's actually quite heavy which kind of defeats the the object of the whole thing but th this is what I've done so you can see it is kind of the ugliest rig in the history of rigs rigs are pretty much ugly these days anyway uh, but um, I've kind of I seem to have um, you know hit the hit the benchmark of ugliness um, the camera that I'll be using on here will be um, well, it might be a Canon C300 with a, a large Canon lens or it may just be a uh, like a little Sony PMW 200 something like that. I'm not entirely sure yet um, But what I like about this rig is I have this archway here Which means I can pretty much fit any camera in there. I'd probably even get a red in there if I was really lucky um, Which I probably would never do Now, um, let me explain about the stuff you didn't see in the previous bit of the video where I was unboxing everything You didn't see this bit here now this bit here, which I'll just show you on the other camera, this is, um, it's, it's gar I mean, it's really pretty crappy. It's uh, plastic, but it's it's solid plastic. So it's so it's pretty cool. Um, and it's basically like a, a, a shoulder mount. It sort of fits onto the shoulder like this. And I can sort of walk around with no hands. I can talk and I can smoke, though I don't smoke. I can drink coffee or I can play the drums. I can play the drums while I'm vlogging like this. So well, that's the good thing about it. I can kind of be, hands-free while I'm running around with the camera, which I think you'll agree is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I have used this uh, cheap bit of kit, and it only costs like, it's under 20 quid, I think. Maybe uh, maybe even, maybe a bit more. Probably, I think I bought mine for like 15 pounds off Amazon, and I bought two of them, and I'm probably gonna buy a couple more for this trip. Um, it's, it's, it's not professional. I did actually modify it. Let's just lower this and show you on the other camera here. I modified it and took, they, they had like a plastic washer there. I put two washers in and added my own metal um, washer here, which is like only a few pence to buy. This just makes this a lot more solid. The thing I don't like about this rig is, um, for example, the way it's attached to the base plate there. I don't know if you can see that. It's attached by a, a plastic um, screw. Now, of course, the plastic screw is uh, has a, a metal section embedded in it, but we know plastic isn't very strong when you need things to be really tight and when you're like, you know, just out, out in the wilds, that's just not going to be reliable. That's why I'll probably buy a couple of these. They're very light. Um, the other thing is, uh, you'll notice I have a Manfrotto uh, monopod attached. The, the joy of these rigs is that they have holes. This, this archway here has holes all the way around. And my plan is to put a magic arm on the top here and then attach another camera here, uh, which will be the, um, the Zoom Q8 that I'm pointing at right now, which is also recording the audio. Do you think the quality is nice? I do. I, I, I'm very happy with it. I, I'm not a massive quality buff. For me, it's all about content, but um, somebody else's area. But I'm very happy with the Q8. Um, so I'll have the Q8 mounted here because it's going to be on like a super wide angle captures everything doesn't miss anything uh, shot where wires this camera's doing lots of zooms and close-ups and whatnot uh, so this has holes all the way around on the hole at the bottom here I've uh, I've put my Manfrotto in and I'll just show you that well I don't do I need to take it off I don't think I do do I you get the idea you know what a Manfrotto monopod looks like and I'm screwing it in missing the thread that's not good okay well that's now gone at least you can see how it, this is how it looks without the Manfrotto, and it is, I say, just just a basic camera rig, isn't it? It's nice and easy to carry. There you go. You see that? I can run all around the place. I can run over here. I can run over there. I can point up. I can point it down. Uh, it's cool. It's cool. It's light. It's efficient. And when I'm not using this, that just folds away, and then I'm on the the handheld, running along, filming feet. Uh, there you go, filming the feet, see that, filming the feet. And I got the handle on the top here. Um, just let me show you this um, rig that I bought, because I'm not entirely happy with it. Uh, you saw me unboxing it. Uh, bits I do like is when I see connections, like this here, uh, which are metal. These are metal with uh, Allen key sort of um, 
screwability, is that a word? Uh, that, that's cool, I like that. Down here on the base plate, which I'll show you on the other camera, you can see we've got like all these, these little plastic, these little plastic knobbies. There's one there. I'm out of breath, can you hear me? It's this little plastic. Now I'm not entirely happy with uh, when I see things like that. I think that that must be, pl it's plastic. So inside there is something metal and there'll be some sort of a teeth system where the, te the teeth of the metal is embedded into the plastic. For me, you know, a little bit too tight and it's threaded. Once it's threaded, it's useless. So I'm never really happy with those. I will, might be looking to replace all these plastic elements with proper metal elements at a later stage. But it's quite a few as you can see around the, the base unit, those plastic things. So I'm not crazy about that. But having said that, this rig was incredibly cheap compared to what you pay for, I don't know, um, any other one. Uh, it's made by, I don't know who I got this one from. Is it Was it newer? I'll find out and I'll put it down in the description below. But uh, it didn't cost me a great amount of money. One thing I am missing, I've realised, is the little... Uh, you saw me uh, bring a bring out a um, like a, what's they call a little mat box. It wasn't really a mat box. It was just barn doors. Uh, that that was rubbish. That that really was terrible. It's not not anywhere to be seen. I think I'll probably throw that away. That was like the that was in the white box. The first the first box I pulled out. I I, I wish I hadn't got that because uh, it really was just horrible. It doesn't line up properly. It flaps around. It's 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 not specific to any particular lens size. Um, it just didn't do it for me. I, you know, I, if I need to mask the sun off somehow to get rid of uh, flares, then I'll think of something else. I'll just gaffer tape something. I'll flag it somehow some other way. So I wish I hadn't really got that because they really were cheap and nasty and horrible. I might fiddle with them. I might modify them. If I do, I'll let you know. So that's kind of my rig. I hope you enjoy it and like it. I'm very much into um, improvising. See if I can screw that back on here. There it goes, screwing it back on. As you can see, this is sliding around here. Uh, the only the other thing I haven't really talked about, and I'll just bring this down so you can see it on the other camera, is this here. This is the um, the follow focus. Uh, if you don't know what a follow focus is, then that's okay. You don't have to. I don't know which one's the fo <laughs> focus. But how, how the follow focus works is this little, um, little wheel here, which turns as you turn this dial here. You can put like a big Allen key in here, so you got an arm you can twist, which is quite cool. And you're supposed to mark off on here the distances, like that's focus point one, focus point two. So I've got an actor moving towards the camera. You know, the focus puller can go, oh, that's position one, position two, and so on and so forth. And um, this is kind of just makes, cause doing that is kind of a hassle. I've I, When I do that, I te it tends to move the camera. Um, you know, it's I, I've got shaky hands anyway, but even the, the person with the steadiest hands, that is always going to be a problem. So it's good to have this because, you know, that way is focusing in the, in the foreground, that way is focusing in the background or vice versa. And this wheel just engages with the, the gauge of the um, of the focus ring on the on the what's it. Um, this one doesn't fit uh, because I've actually got a band with its own teeth that fit the, this gauge here. So I've got the, old, the band somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure where it is, but that does exist. Um, I don't know if I've shown you this, but I also do have this light here, which I may use for certain interviews. I might take this uh, focus wheel off. I'm not entirely sure, but I do have, I don't think it's going to fit, is it? Yeah, that doesn't fit anymore. So that's the light I bought. I don't know if you remember, it's like a ring light. I, I need to fiddle around with these rails and get everything working together. But this is a cool thing. This was really cheap. You see what I mean? Just by buying cheap stuff. It's just got a battery in the, in the bottom there. It's like four batteries all around the edge. And this is just cool and it just slides onto here. It's got like a little, little sliding slots there, which is that way around. So they just slot onto the ring. If it, if, if it didn't hit at the bottom here, that would actually fit. And that's a cool little thing. I like that. Um, as, as you see, like I am a professional. This is what I do for a living. This is um, my bread and butter. Um, and I know I'm not using professional kit a lot of the time. But that's kind of who I am. That's how I like to operate. My theory is that uh, this kit is so cheap, if it breaks, you've not lost anything. 
I did buy a Canon XF305 once, and this is my advice to anyone thinking about buying a camera to do the job. Uh, I think you have to be honest with yourself. You're not buying the camera to do the job. You're buying the camera because you want to write it off against uh, profit, meaning you pay less tax. But what you're actually after is a bit of a toy. Um, I just don't recommend you do it because you're just not going to make the money back on the camera. In, in, for example, I see um, an XF305 in the UK. I'd struggle getting from a client any more than £75 a day for the use of that camera. Um, now, how many 75s are there in three and a half grand? Or when I bought it, it was like five and a half grand. And uh, it was just going to take forever before I actually paid for the camera. And of course, the camera lost two grand of, of value within two years because that's what happens with cameras. They become really cheap, really quick because somebody brings out a better camera or like six months later. So I don't bother buying my own camera kit. And I'm like that with other stuff as well. Every now and then you hit gold and you find something like this, which I found is very durable. I've, I've bought, this is the first one I ever bought. It's still working. I've had this for a few years now. I do have another one because I'm scared that they will stop making them. But I'm going to buy another one yet. Um, I might modify it and put a better bolt under there. Um, but um, yeah, so that's my rig, really. I, I don't really have much more to say about it. If you've got any questions, please just ask. You can get me on Twitter. I'm at Fluctibus Flood. Or you can write something down below where it says, leave a message. What's it say? It says, it says, no, it's no. It says, it says, uh, comment leave a comment you can leave a comment if you want that is absolutely cool by me I do tend to get back to people at the moment because uh, I don't have many subscribers uh, I'm not trying to sound pathetic there that's just the case which means I'm very very chatty but if it's if it gonna take me like hours to reply to everyone then I gotta be honest I probably wouldn't be able to do that so the most interesting comments will be the ones I respond to um, thanks very much hope you like the video please share it with the world if you think it's worth doing this is my cheap way of being very mobile out in the field uh, and just getting some decent results. It's all in the planning. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much and fare thee well. Goodbye and toodaloo.